As the end of mainstream support for Windows 10 draws near and an extended support announcement is yet to be made, users are becoming more and more vocal about legitimate concerns. A lot of them are pissed at Microsoft, and apparently, some of them are pissed at me. You're a tech channel and you don't even bother to fact check what Microsoft is claiming. Those on-paper requirements are meant to scare people to new hardware. In reality, you can run Windows 11 on any of the PCs you ran 10 on. You believe the official disclaimer blindly instead of checking if that indeed is the case. The creator was clearly more concerned about making a rage bait video for clicks than educating and informing. Oh boy. So in my previous video, I talked about how the end of mainstream support for Windows 10 in 2025 could affect users whose systems do not meet the official minimum hardware requirements, and by god did you guys have some thoughts. Which is more than welcome, because a lot of you touched on some pretty interesting topics that can actually serve as great additions to the broader conversation. But before we move on, just a quick reminder that this video can be consumed in just audio form, and if you'd like to jump to any specific chapter, you can do so by utilizing the timestamps in the description. Also, if you find the video interesting, please consider supporting the channel by subscribing and turning on bell notifications. Thanks a ton. Now, first and foremost, I'm happy to say that the overwhelming majority of the discourse in the comments section was carried out in a civilized manner. Sure, you guys had some disagreements and some strong opinions were definitely voiced, but at the end of the day, the topic in question is something that people in this community tend to have strong opinions about, so the occasional heated exchange is totally fine as long as everybody stays decent, which you mostly have, so thank you for that. Although the sheer volume of expressed opinions turned out to be rather overwhelming, I was able to categorize the majority of the comments I have caught up with into manageable groups. And to prove that I'm not some sort of Microsoft chill or arrogant prick who thinks he's above scrutiny, I've decided to start with criticism that was specifically directed at me, which is something you've already got a glimpse of in the beginning of this video, but by all means, here's some more. I'm surprised there was no mention of the registry fix regarding unsupported CPUs and TPM requirements. What exactly is the problem? Microsoft itself has published instructions on how to work around these restrictions. You're discussing a non-existent issue. It's really easy to install Windows 11 on unsupported machines. So, by far the most common criticism that I got on this video stems from the fact that I did not talk about viable workarounds that make it possible to force Windows 11 onto PCs that do not meet the official hardware requirements set by Microsoft. Now, here's the truth. While I did consciously exclude this information, I want to emphasize that my intention was not rooted in any malicious or nefarious reasons. You see, when I'm in the process of writing videos like these, I typically select a topic, research it to the best of my ability, determine the angle from which I want to approach it, and then proceed to craft a story. The reason I didn't talk about workarounds in the previous video was because I was approaching the topic at hand from the angle of matters and possibilities as they pertain to the overwhelming majority of the user base. You see, one thing that can easily get lost on tech-savvy people is the fact that they represent just a tiny sliver of the overall base. Now, that's not to say that the rest of the users are incapable. On the contrary, they can be wizards at the specific tasks that they do for a living or as a hobby. But when it comes to the platform that facilitates their work, everyday users typically expect a streamlined experience, which shouldn't have to depend on them even thinking about it, let alone researching for and executing workarounds. While going through the comments, I came across one viewer who said, I can't believe people don't know how to put Windows 11 on older systems. Well, believe it or not, a lot of people just don't. And it's not a question of whether they're capable of it or not. I'm sure that almost everyone could learn how to install Windows 11 on unsupported hardware in no more than the time it takes to watch a decent YouTube tutorial. But the reality is that the vast majority of Windows users neither watch videos like these, nor do they consider their PC operating system as something that has an expiration date beyond which their digital security might be jeopardized. Given that my objective was to discuss the most likely outcomes in a reality that mostly consists of such users, I labeled the workarounds as something that would not be a realistic general solution, which is why I ultimately chose not to address them. And although I still hold the same opinion, I do regret not mentioning them at all. It was a missed opportunity on my part, and it's one that I intend to rectify by saying the following. Yes, there obviously are ways you can install Windows 11 on PCs that do not meet the official system requirements, which is something that even the folks at Microsoft have acknowledged themselves. However, what also needs to be acknowledged is the fact that there are a couple of caveats to this which have the potential of actually defeating the purpose in its entirety. Firstly, forcing Windows 11 onto unsupported hardware may lead to compatibility issues which can range from minor to severe. 
And secondly, you will not be guaranteed to receive updates, including, but not limited to, security updates. Now, should these caveats arise at some point, installing Windows 11 on unsupported hardware would quite literally equate to installing an operating system in its end of life phase, which I highly doubt would be of any help to stranded Windows 10 users in October 2025. It's not that difficult for a savvy user to get around the restrictions one viewer emphasized, but the bigger problem is with all the non-savvy users stuck on Windows 10 becoming more and more vulnerable to security issues that Microsoft no longer wants to patch. While the system requirements may be bypassed, another person pointed out, that's not something that someone who only uses their PC for basic uses would want to do. Bottom line is, the official solution for potentially tens if not hundreds of millions of stranded Windows 10 users, who mind you were pushed onto the platform through unprecedented distribution tactics, cannot be a workaround that may or may not guarantee security. On a mass scale, it simply won't work. If, however, you do have the know-how to utilize a particular workaround in order to buy yourself some additional time, all power to you. And I should have said that in the previous video. But by far the most common type of comments on the previous video were ones regarding potential migrations from Windows to Linux distros. Microsoft is working really hard to make Linux more attractive, one viewer pointed out. The Linux community is well aware of this situation, another person remarked. Tons of updates and changes were made for the sole purpose of making the transition as easy as possible for inexperienced users. Distros like Linux Mint will really have their time to shine, someone else predicted, while expressing hope that there will soon be more distros that work out of the box, eliminating the tedium of switching for people coming from Windows. Perhaps 2025 really will be the year of Linux. And perhaps it will, to an extent. I believe it's entirely plausible that certain distros will experience an increase in usage when Windows 10 enters its EOL phase, and I think this is supported by the fact that a substantial number of tech-savvy individuals have already been transitioning, mostly due to their dissatisfaction with Microsoft's approach to Windows. Reasons like this are why I switched to Linux. I've installed Pop! OS a few years ago and never looked back. For anyone who doesn't want to be hyper-dependent on big tech, open source is the only way forward. The best thing I've ever done was ditch Windows completely and move to Linux Mint. Now, come October 2025, when presumably Windows 10 will be effectively dead, and newer versions will be drenched in AI features that make the telemetry of today look like baby stuff, which, by the way, people may or may not even be able to run on their machines, I can totally see more people turning to Linux distros. And many people actually expressed a similar sentiment in the comments. Like Microsoft once said, Windows 10 is the last version of Windows. At least for me, one person stated. I'll upgrade to Linux if I have to, maybe even before 2025. I hope to make Windows 10 the last version of Windows I use as my main OS, another person wrote. The spying it does already creeps me out, and it only gets worse with 11. The end of 10 might finally give me enough of a push to switch. With all that said, I think it's important to remember that more than one thing can be true at the same time. Even though it's completely reasonable to expect that certain distros will see a spike in usage, I feel that it's highly unlikely that we'll see anything resembling a mass exodus from Windows to Linux, or even Mac OS. And I think that this user did a really good job in explaining why. I like everyone's enthusiasm in the comments, but let's be honest. The average computer user isn't going to throw away everything they know about Windows and suddenly learn how to use a whole new operating system. They're gonna suck it up and get Windows 11. The simplest answer is usually the right one. Now, this is completely unrelated, but I just had to include it anyway. Would it have killed you to utter the word Linux instead of coyly hinting about alternatives? Well, even though I've already said it a bunch of times, just for this guy, Linux, 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 Linux. Everyone else, I'm sorry, okay? Linux. A number of people have expressed concerns that the end of support for Windows 10 may trigger a chain of events and circumstances that could eventually lead to significant environmental issues. The worry is that a substantial number of users whose computers do not meet the minimum requirements for Windows 11 could contribute to a completely avoidable e-waste crisis by purchasing new compatible machines and disposing of their previous ones. Microsoft is making a big environmental mistake. The amount of pointless e-waste this will create will be insanely high it'd be a totally unnecessary financial and environmental problem. Now, the wording of many of these comments, specifically phrases like pointless e-waste and unnecessary problem, emphasize just how absurd this whole situation would actually be. Because if Windows 11 is capable of running on a lot of officially unsupported machines, which we know it is thanks to the workarounds that we've extensively talked about previously, an e-waste problem in 2025 technically should be just about the most avoidable issue Microsoft could imagine. 
It would be a catastrophic environmental disaster, one person stated, especially considering how many people managed to run Windows 11 on older machines. I'm using older hardware, which is working perfectly fine, another person explained. I can't imagine it becoming unusable within the span of two years. The end of support for Windows 10 will turn an unimaginable amount of perfectly usable hardware into e-waste. And the whole situation becomes even more absurd when we know that Microsoft is a company that, as one viewer pointed out, supposedly cares about e-waste problems given their zero-waste goals and policies. So how can this be dealt with? Well, one possible solution would be for Microsoft to build upon their existing recycling program by partnering with manufacturers and retailers in order to create programs that would facilitate the refurbishment of incompatible PCs as well as the recycling of older components. But given the fact that such an action would be, to put it mildly, financially questionable, I'm not quite sure about the likelihood of it taking place on a mass scale. However, there is one factor, albeit unfortunate, that will probably keep the potential e-waste problem contained, and it's one I'm afraid many people are still overlooking. Some might consider this a hot take, but I think that we probably won't see a full-scale environmental catastrophe take place in a very narrow time frame because a substantial portion of the Windows 10 user base will almost certainly continue using the operating system even after October 2025. Now, the more tech-savvy users who feel that their online security is entirely dependent on reasonable browsing habits will not see this as a problem. But for the more common everyday users who don't think about these kinds of things, it's highly unfortunate. Now, I'm not quite sure what the correct literary device would be here, but as it turns out, one problem might actually help reduce, or at least water down, another. Now, the next topic that a number of you guys brought up is something that I'm kind of reluctant to give personal opinions about as it pertains to legal matters, which is something that I know so little about that it's hard for me to even attempt making any sort of coherent statements that wouldn't sound like I'm pulling them out of my rear end. But it is a very interesting topic, and I wouldn't want any of you skeptics out there thinking I'm sweeping something under the rug for that sweet, sweet Microsoft cash. So here's what some of you had to say. I'm surprised Microsoft was never hit with a false advertising lawsuit, one person said, as Windows 10 was advertised as the last version of Windows. Microsoft never said that, someone else replied. That was just a rumor started by a single employee. It wasn't just some random employee, another person added. It was Jerry Nixon, and Microsoft was happy to never correct his statement. I feel that if enough people's PCs get compromised, Microsoft could face legal trouble, one person commented. To which somebody else replied, if there was a severe enough vulnerability, they just patch it, just like they patched XP well after it was dropped. This comment is of course alluding to the 2017 Windows XP update that was released due to a rise in global ransomware attacks. But the following sentiment, at least in my opinion, raises the most troubling concern here. I think that the situation where one company could potentially disrupt a world economy because of a lack of support for their products is very concerning. There should be no such dependency. Governments should step in and do something about it. Okay, so here's what I have to say. In a time that was so long ago that it now feels like a previous life, I used to be a journalist, and as a journalist, I used to report on a lot of political events and happenings. Now, through my experience, I've learned how to recognize obvious illegalities, like when a government official is in a conflict of interest, or when such an individual is using government money and power for personal gains, or when something is simply so morally deplorable that you know it has to be illegal simply because you've been alive on this earth for more than two days. But when it comes to things like antitrust laws, or whatever might be in question here, I really can't sit here and pretend like I have any authority to give out meaningful opinions. However, what I do know from my own time as a journalist is that these sorts of things often depend on political moods in organizations that have the potential of starting legal actions. If a group of very influential people have some sort of higher incentive to legally go after a particular entity, they might do it even if it's objectively difficult to make a case. If they don't, well, it's anyone's guess. But again, this stuff is way beyond my pay grade, so that's really all I have to say about that. In the end, I think it's important to remember that most people just use their computers to get a job done. Now, I know that advancement is important, and tech companies certainly have every right to make new products and run their businesses however they see fit. But when your product becomes so deeply fundamental for the proper functioning of other people's businesses and personal activities, there comes a point where you have to ask yourself, is it really justified to force people onto something new 
when the previous thing works perfectly fine. So here's just a thought. Maybe that whole Windows as a service idea was the way to go after all. Thanks for watching, and as always, stay strong.